Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank the organizer for uh, inviting me to give the talk. So today we're going to switch from the prep to a little bit about the treatment. So I think for most of the uh, audience here, you have um, some uh, clients in, in your clinic. Um, they're taking one daily uh, single tablet regimen uh, every day with a very good uh, uh, viral suppression, and they will still ask you a question, like they wish one day they could uh, have a, they don't have to take the t uh, pill every day. So I hope after this uh, session that uh, you will have a different answer to this question. So my outline is that we'll uh, go through uh, different uh, long-acting uh, uh, antiretroviral therapy so far, uh, uh, well, from the clinical trials to the real-world data, and also uh, we'll touch on uh, the care repeatering LA and also lend the care every year. Also, we'll talk about the recommendation now available from uh, the international guidelines, and also the status quo of this long-acting, uh, specifically cap uh, repeatering LA in Asia Pacific region. And also, we'll talk about the potential barrier for the future uh, implementation of long-acting ART. So this is the timeline of the ART develop, uh, development. Uh, starting 1997, uh, we are actually uh, uh, entering a hard era. Uh, very soon, we start to have a single tablet regimen, uh, starting from 2006 with the first uh, STR or tripla. And actually, for long-acting era, it's not that future thing as we thought. Uh, in terms of long-acting um, a, a long acting regimen, um, by definition, uh, according to the DHS guideline, uh, any uh, regimen which dose once weekly or less frequently can be to, uh, called long-acting. So um, in 2018, actually, the FDA approved the very first long-acting um, natural therapy or ibalizumab is an anti-CD4 uh, monoclonal antibody uh, which is being uh, used to treat uh, treatment, uh, heavily treatment experience uh, patients uh, and being given uh, twice weekly, uh, sorry, uh, bi-weekly. So this is really the very first uh, long-acting ART available. And by um, early 2021, we have uh, uh, Capitigravir, a long-acting uh, uh, INSTI, and also repeatering a long-acting NRTI available as for uh, stable switch. And also in two, uh, late 2022, we have Lenacapavir also approved for treatment in uh, treatment uh, experience patients. So this is the clinical trials um, data from uh, CAP Repeatering LA. I think uh, a lot of speakers in this um, meeting have talked about all these uh, clinical trials, so we are not going to spend too much time on that. I just want to draw your attention to uh, how these uh, clinical trials have been uh, designed. So the very first uh, two labeling study, which is the FLAIR and ATLAS, are comparing really CAP uh, Repeatering uh, LA uh, giving every four weeks with oral leading or OLI uh, compared with uh, traditional uh, oral uh, ART given daily. And um, the results were non inferior to the uh, conventional oral ART. And then um, these two studies have been extended to different uh, clinical trials. One is uh, from Atlas, it goes to Atlas 2M. This is also a uh, compare between uh, uh, CAP repeatering um, given uh, every eight weeks uh, with oral leading versus uh, the, um, the previous Atlas. Uh, uh, arm is giving uh, every four weeks. So um, the results uh, was non inferior in uh, these two uh, arms. So uh, that's why uh, the uh, cap uh, repeatering uh, long acting have been approved for both given uh, every month or bi-monthly. In the uh, extension phase of flare uh, clinical trial, uh, optional uh, oral leading has been allowed and also has been shown compared to uh, uh, oral leading. The direct injection has also shown non inferior results. So, uh, in the label, now the oral leading can be optional. Finally, it's a solar uh, clinical trial, which has been uh, 
presented uh, at Croy this year, it has been uh, compared uh, the uh, big tough FTC with uh, cap uh, repeatering giving every eight uh, so every eight weeks, uh, with or without oral leading. So this also showed the uh, non-inferior results. So for a lot of people uh, in the room might wonder whether our clients or the, the uh, trial participants can really tolerate uh, the uh, intermediate injection for such a long time. So from the clinical trial, we can see that these injection side reaction or the pain are not uncommon. However, if you really see, uh, look at the severe uh, ISR events or people who uh, withdrawn from the study due to these uh, uh, injection-related uh, reaction were relative rare. How about the real-world data? So far, we have uh, three uh, implementation studies and also core studying has been uh, presented. One is the Carousel, which has done in five uh, European countries. More than 400 uh, virological suppressed uh, people living with HIV were switched to uh, carry-pivoting giving every two months. And um, this study has been uh, designed to have um, these uh, clinical sites randomized into two different uh, implementation uh, uh, strategies. One is a standard implementation, another is a uh, enhance implementation with face-to-face uh, -face injection training to the healthcare uh, providers, and also uh, monthly uh, continued quality improvement calls and also skill wrap-up uh, team meetings. So um, uh, wishing that these uh, enhanced measures can help the healthcare provider to provide uh, uh, repeatering long uh, at injection most smoothly. So the results at uh, month 12 are both on with a similar level of virological suppression for the patients. However, um, there is a slightly greater proportion of healthcare provider uh, from the uh, enhancement, uh, enhanced in, uh, implementation um, uh, re, uh, sorry, uh, for the uh, standard implementation arm, um, uh, there are more a greater proportion of healthcare provider re re reported still working on it. So, uh, with these implementation uh, enhanced uh, um, measures, can actually help to uh, decrease the barrier for the uh, healthcare providers. For Carlos cohort from Germany, uh, there are 236 uh, uh, virolo uh, virologically suppressed people living with IV receive at least one shot of cap repeatering dose uh, every two months. And by uh, month six, around 90% uh, had achieved uh, virologic suppression. Only one participant reported uh, virologic failure. Another um, uh, real-world data from uh, Opera Coho in US uh, um, showed that like, uh, 376 uh, people living with HIV, some of them are undetectable and uh, some of them are actually detectable at baseline, received at least one shot of uh, cabripivirine LA. And uh, mostly they were dosing um, monthly because in US it was uh, first approved as a uh, monthly dosing regimen for uh, Cap uh, repeatering. So in, in this cohort, they found like 95% uh, with an undetectable baseline at entry uh, remain undetectable. However, which is quite interesting, is like 90% uh, 90, uh, 90 uh, of the uh, participants at entry with a, a viral load greater than 200 actually also achieve a viral load less than 200 copies per milliliter. So it really brings us to some interest that while um, the cat repeatering has been approved for uh, treatment uh, so, uh, in a viro virological suppressed uh, patients, would it be imp uh, possible to give to uh, people with uh, uh, more barrier to uh, keep their good adherence and also not being able to take ART every day and then have a, a detectable viral load. So this uh, very interesting study had been uh, presented at Koi this year by Dr. Uh, Monica Gandhi. Uh, and it was done in a safety net clinic in, based in San Francisco. 
So these patients were uh, really have all these structure barriers with um, publicly uh, insured patients and high rates of mental illness, substance use, and also unstable housing. And uh, this uh, study had uh, conduct with a very rigorous protocol. All these patients were being uh, outraged from the staff, and also they are being given uh, they are required to be committed to for, to a. Uh, um, uh, monthly or uh, visit every four weeks. And also these patients have been reviewed every two weeks. So um, more than around uh, three quarter of these uh, injections have been given on time, which is quite impressive. And uh, among those participants who had a suppressed uh, a viral load at the baseline, it's around 57%. 100% of them remain uh, virally, uh, virologically suppressed at, uh, uh, um, at the end, uh, uh, when, when they reported the, the results. Uh, interestingly, for those uh, viremic uh, participants at baseline, which have been defined with a viral load greater than 30 copies per milliliter, uh, had a uh, almost all surprised but two with a uh, early virological failure. So give it a total of 97.5% uh, of virological suppression with a median, uh, with a ray median uh, 26 weeks. So uh, some of you in the room might um, kind of worried about like a, a virological failure while using this uh, long acting uh, regimen. Uh, regimen mainly because despite a very good adherence in clinical trials, some of the participants still develop uh, virological failure and associated uh, drug resistance, which might pre uh, preclude them uh, to use uh, INST or NRTI-based uh, treatment at the first line uh, available. So from these uh, clinical trial and real uh, world data, we can see that the virological failure rate wasn't that uh, high. Uh, in the poor data from uh, these three trials, uh, FLARE, ATLAS, and others 2M, a total of 23 or 1.4 um, confirmed virological failure were documented. Uh, of noted, um, those who uh, receive uh, uh, long-acting uh, injection every eight weeks are having a, a little bit higher uh, incidence of uh, virological failure compared to the uh, uh, people who receive uh, uh, the, the injection every four weeks, but the difference is uh, non-significant. And most of these virological failure uh, occurred uh, by uh, 24 weeks. That means there is the early phase of the uh, people who are uh, receiving uh, this uh, treatment. And for the for the uh, real world data, like over the recent uh, data, like carousel or solar, they are being followed uh, the, following these patients until uh, 48 week, and uh, the uh, confirmed virological failure was pretty rare; it's less than one percent. And from these poor data, actually, we can identify uh, several uh, baseline factors which are. Uh, associated with a greater risk or increased risk of uh, uh, confirmed virological failure, which are um, archived uh, repivering uh, resistant associated mutations, and also uh, the uh, uh, and subtype A6 or A1, which is usually associated with infection in Russia, and also um, the partisan with a baseline BMI greater than 30 uh, kilos per uh, uh, square meters. And with one uh, of each uh, um, uh, risk factors, you have an a increase uh, of uh, a very large failure to around 2%. And with uh, greater than two of these uh, uh, factors that actually increase your risk factor uh, almost to 20%. Then we are going to uh, look at a little bit like a uh, little bit uh, like uh, the lenacapavir. So lenacapavir has uh, only conducted uh, in two different populations. The labeling uh, uh, 
uh, trial is focusing, the Capella study is focusing on heavily treated experienced people living with HIV with a uh, detectable viral load and also with uh, documented resistance to greater than three of the four classes available nowadays. So they are being conducting two different phases. The first phase uh, is uh, the oral lenacapavir and it was uh, used to prove that whether this uh, lenacapavir monotherapy can uh, effectively uh, decrease the viral load. And it's shown that it's actually uh, effective degrees greater than uh, 0 0.5 a log of viral load within two weeks. Then the study uh, continued to the second phase, which has been continued until uh, so far the week uh, 52. And um, the, the, the participants were uh, given a uh, lenacavir rate of cutaneous every six months with uh, an optimal uh, uh, background uh, regimen. And the efficacy was pretty good actually at uh, week 42 with almost 80% of people have been uh, virally suppressed uh, less than uh, 50 copies per milliliter. Then it's um, being explored to see whether that can be potentially used as a uh, long-acting treatment for stable switch. So originally it was coupled with uh, islatrovir, unfortunately, um, due to the CD4 um, decrease for islatrovir, uh, the associated um, trials have been suspended. So. Um, they uh, the Gilead tried really tried to find another partner for the uh, Nacapavir, so it comes with another different mechanism, which is a monoclonal antibody. Um, yesterday's trial, Dr. Hoy had been uh, presented these uh, trials, so they are being uh, using the Nacapavir with two other. Um, uh, monoclonal antibody targeting on different binding sites of the uh, HIV envelope protein or GP120. Uh, so the uh, Zilivimab or ZAP or Teropavimab or TAP have been uh, combined used to decrease the uh, emergence of resistance to these monoclonal antibody. So it has, there has been the phase 1b study uh, also presented this year at CROI have shown that uh, alone, um, so lenacapavir uh, with uh, overlating giving every six months along with uh, TAP and higher and lower dose of ZAP uh, intravenously uh, has been shown some uh, efficacy at the uh, uh, week of 26. However, one uh, continued in the higher dose uh, uh, ZAP group, and another one uh, had uh, developed a, a virological failure in a lower dose of ZAP group. So this um, re uh, this resource will bring these uh, two combinations or three combinations to the uh, phase two study. So, uh, so far the international guidelines have uh, different recommendations um, uh, who are the best people using these um, Drugs. So, uh, during EX, uh, they, they're, um, the EX uh, guidelines have probably um, the, the first one who actually uh, uh, wrote this and with a quite straightforward recommendation. They're only for people who have been virologically suppressed and had no without a historical resistance and who uh, have a hepatitis B immunity or they have a com concomitant uh, hepatitis B uh, vaccinations. For B uh, for BIVA, actually, the guidelines will be more detailed and have more uh, uh, restricted recommendation for people who are using uh, uh, capripivirine LA. For example, uh, they are suggest people not using uh, this um, if their BMI were uh, greater than 30, and also uh, with uh, uh, A16 uh, subtype, and also they uh, suggest people to have monitoring every uh, two months for their viral load. And DHA guideline sh somehow show less um, uh, restriction compared to this. So for the status quo in our region, as you can see, some countries without uh, registration or reimbursement, some with only conditional or partial re uh, 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 Reimbursement and only uh, like in countries like Japan or Australia has a, a, a very good reimbursement according to their national schemes. In the other countries in, this, um, um, in our region will probably have a demo project as we heard from yesterday. 
So uh, what's the potential barriers? Uh, of course, that um, uh, for people living with HIV, they need drug holidays, and also um, they will need to balance between um, uh, coming back every uh, two months to have the, this injection. And also, um, there's no data for uh, pregnancy. And for healthcare providers, they also need to think about um, uh, how to manage the delayed visits and also all these infrequent biological failure they are encountered whether they will be able to, to manage. So this is my conclusion. And so since 2018, uh, three uh, long-acting uh, intraviral therapy have been uh, approved. And also KBIA repeatering have been shown non-inferior to the uh, traditional oral ART in clinical trial. And also um, um, we, there are several um, uh, baseline factors that we need to consider in order to avoid the treatment uh, uh, failure and also resistant emergence. And also the access to KBLA uh, and the environments is still a key issue in our region. So I think, uh, hope like everybody after this talk will have a different thought about it. And when next time you're answering the question of your patient, uh, you got a different option. Thank you.